Hi everyone, welcome to the next lecture and our current speaker is Morgan Paris and uh, she's a fundraising manager at Asiet Vegetal and what she says about herself, when she was a little girl she wanted to become Batman and save every person in need or at least she had the costume. When she was a teenager she wanted to become a psychiatrist and heal people's minds. When she was a young adult she specialized in political science to change people's minds. Finally, she decided to join Asiat Vegetal as a fundraising manager, and she's back to being Batman as she tries saving lives thanks to money. So today, Morgan will talk to us about uh, working on and with professionals to change practices. So uh, hello, Morgan, and we'll be hello. switching uh, to the presentation. And of course, later we will see you at the Q&A part uh, of the lecture. Please remember to post your questions to the live Q&A section uh, right top part of your screen. Thank you so much and see you after the lecture. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I am Morgan Paris. I am the fundraising manager of Asiel Vegetal. And today I'll be presenting, um, working on and with professionals to change practices. So the idea of this uh, presentation is to find out how to reach out to a targeted sector for campaigns and a targeted sector that, uh, that is composed of people who are not interested um, in uh, animalism and animal rights. And so how to get, that on, how to get them sorry, on board of your mission and campaign. But first of all, some words about Cécile Végétal. We are a French uh, organization. We date back from uh, 2018. We are a small organization. We have three full-time uh, employees and uh, 19 um, volunteers. And we work uh, to convert French collective catering to plant-based options. Why collective catering? Because first of all, it makes a huge difference for animals. As in France, 246 tons of meat are consumed in collective restaurants. And for example, if we implemented in France one quarter of plant-based dishes in collective restaurants, 18 millions of land animals and up to 240 millions of aquatic animals could be spared. But also, it's a good way to convert individuals to a more plant-based diet. But let's go back to our presentation first find out about your targeted sector. Um, when you arrive in a, in a field, you have to uh, look for information about it, look for information about the field itself, but also about the professions and professionals who compose, who compose it. So you can talk to people. Um, this is obvious, but that's definitely useful. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out to them to find out information about um, what's the job, uh, how is um, how is this sector? Uh, how does it mean? What does it mean to work there? What are their constraints? Uh, what are uh, their motivations as professionals? So you can better design your campaigns and frame a narrative for them. Also, you can get information by reading. You can read uh, specialized press on your targeted sector. Uh, you can you can also read uh, manuals, professional manuals or sociological manuals about your targeted sector. You can also register to, um, to newsletters um, about your targeted sector. So newsletters for professionals and get more information. And, and as an example, let's take uh, the one of Asia Vegetal. Most of the time, we're gonna talk to four types of professions. We're gonna talk with elected municipals. Uh, so those are the people in charge of the policy in uh, collective catering for school. Um, we're gonna talk to institutional administrators. So those are, for example, um, school directors. We will talk with uh, restaurant managers. Those are the people in charge of uh, the canteens themselves. And we will talk with professional cooks who are um, the persons, uh, very important professionals who are gonna be in charge of doing, um, uh, creating the dishes and serving them in the collective restaurants. But now let's take a look at what do they look like. Uh, it's a bit simplistic, uh, but it's uh, always um, interesting to have a, a bit of a stereotypical approach just to have some points you can work on. For example, most of them, they are uh, mostly driven by consensual change. That means that they are very reluctant 
uh, to proposals and change uh, and values that are not uh, considered as consensual. Uh, consensual meaning um, shared by a lot of people and socially acceptable, let's say. Once you have some information about um, your targeted sector and the professionals, the idea is to establish a common ground, because as an activist in animal rights, of course, what you want is not what is desired by, by the others, because most of uh, the populations we just talked about, and it's even more the case in France, are not interested in animalism. Uh, animalism is still considered as a bit of an extreme uh, point of view unfortunately. So it's not on that that we're going to meet uh, them. It's on different, uh, a different set of values. And so let's say, about, let's talk about those consensual values. Those are values that are shared and, um, and considered as acceptable by most of the society. In our case, it's uh, ecology, public health and equality ecology because of course um, the plant-based diet is the best one for ecology uh, public health because it's uh, also the best one for for health and equality equality of access to uh, collective catering when you're a vegan person or a vegetarian so those are the values that we can talk um, about with uh, those professionals even if those are not um, the values that are going to drive the change. Uh, most of the time, it's the hows um, that is um, more important than the whys. But anyways, we can talk uh, with elected municipals about uh, ecology, public health and equality. We can talk about it with restaurant managers, institutional, institutional uh, administratives and cooks. And those are values that are going to be understandable. That's a common ground. And basically, uh, we can reach out to them uh, by talking about uh, the compatibility of uh, plant-based uh, options in collective catering with a legal, legal framework. Because, for example, in France, we have a law um, that, um, that um, uh, obliges um, uh, collective restaurants in school canteens to propose a, a weekly uh, plant-based option. And um, the legal framework, of course, can go one way and not the other. And this way is going more plan-based. So an argument you can uh, put on the table with your professionals is that it's better to be prepared and uh, prepared for change in the legal framework and start doing more plan-based options uh, before the legal framework actually changes. Also, you're going to reach out to them with consensual values, the ones we just talked about. And a very important uh, argument in your, um, uh, in your speech should be profitability, because profitability is a common trait to um, common interest to all of your interlocutors. Uh, so uh, the four of them are interested in it. And it's, of course, very important for most pro professionals as the dishes that are served in uh, the collective restaurants have to be um, easy to um, easy to prepare, but most of all, not too costly. So it's um, it's very important, and it has to have success um, with the guests. So profitability is one of the best arguments. Also, you can talk about technicality and show that you are yourselves. Uh, interested in uh, technicality and experts of um, the technicality of collective catering and cooking. And for this, uh, a very good angle is to surround yourself uh, with uh, persons who are experts of this, because you yourself, of course, you're not uh, an expert of collective catering. So uh, you're going to surround yourself with, um, with people who are for example, dietitians uh, who can speak in your name and explain um, the basics of a, of a, a balanced um, plant-based diet. Uh, you can surround yourselves with uh, professional trainers in uh, plant-based cooking and people who know what they talk about, share knowledge with them, um, take their knowledge and also have them talk in your, in your place. And finally, it has to be realistic. Uh, your proposal has to be realistic so that it's put into into practice and it's actually tested uh, because if not it won't be con it, it will be considered as too risky for all the professionals at stake so now how to switch uh, switch position from outsider to change uh, facilitator 
as an animalist uh, organization, uh, you are considered as activists and probably uh, as uh, some people who are here to um, like deliver problem. And that's why you designed the narrative. We talked about it previously um, uh, to reach out to your professionals and frame your campaign so that they are uh, understandable, they are profitable for your targeted sector. Also, you can display this narrative on your, stone, your storefront. This is your website. You can uh, display it via LinkedIn and you can also display it via a professional newsnet, newsletter. So first of all, um, on your website, so here it is uh, the one of Asiel de Végétal, you know, uh, you see the red box. It's uh, the place where there is the website for um, the web page for professionals. They can type uh, or um, they can go on our website and see that we actually talk to them. We talk in their language according to their uh, professional grammar, and we have something to uh, some things to offer. Here is um, a screenshot of uh, our web page for professionals, and here are tools or, and resources. It's easy to understand, and it shows that we actually bring services, we bring so, uh, solutions. Also, as an activist, part of your organization, you can promote your campaigns via your professional LinkedIn, your personal one. Here, um, I took the example of Cyril Ernst, which is, who is um, one of our two campaign managers. And he, um, as a campaign manager in a small organization such as ours, is a very important interlocutor for professionals. So uh, we decided, and he decided to, to frame his LinkedIn so that he can reach out to a lot of professionals and uh, post, um, post articles on how it is useful to um, implement plant-based options for collective restaurants, uh, how this change is feasible, durable, and so on. So um, as he will be talking with most of our interlocutors in collective catering, he, so, he shows himself and the organization um, with the best angle. And we designed recently a professional newsletter uh, directed toward uh, professionals in collective catering. So most of them are cooks, but they can be dietitians, uh, they can be restaurant managers and so on. And the idea is to talk about things that interest them. For example, the evolution of the legal framework uh, on collective catering. Uh, also, uh, we, deliver, um, we will deliver recipes adapted to collective catering and plant-based, of course. So you can do two things at the same time, you can um, interest professionals on cooking, collective catering, and so technical and technicality, and at the same time, promote uh, your, your message and propose to implement a change. So it's a good way to reach out to them and to gain legitimacy because it's always something you're going to look for. And finally, how to design tools for change. Um, I took the example, three examples uh, for Assiette Végétale. It's a toolbox, uh, which is delivered to um, every interlocutor of Asiel Végétal, the professional training for professional chefs and uh, prom promotional events. <clears throat> As for the toolbox, it's a PDF document, uh, so it's easily uh, shareable. And we, we, um, uh, we talk about the whys and the hows um, for a daily plan-based option in uh, collective restaurants and generally why to uh, promote more plant-based options in your collective restaurant. So as for the why, you can talk about, uh, of course, um, the consensual values uh, we talked about before, but also and more importantly about profitability, uh, showing uh, to your professionals that there is actually a demand for it. For example, recently we ordered um, a poll on uh, the demand for plant-based options in in France, and uh, that's a good uh, that's a good data to share with your um, with your professionals. You have to show that it is rational to take this stand. And also, we talk about the how. And when I say the how, I mean the how, uh, because the how is always more important than the why when you talk uh, with um, with professionals. Uh, they are more interested um, in 
if it's going to be doable for them. Um, so the how is very important. In our case, we, um, we have a page uh, on our document explaining, we asked a dietetician to explain the basics of the balanced diet um, for plant-based and also have 14 recipes um, which are plant-based uh, and uh, adapted to, to collective catering. So it shows that there are recipes, you can design your own recipes and that's definitely important to show the, the how. Also, we designed um, professional training for uh, cooks in um, collective restaurants. And this uh, professional training is online. It is, um, it is, held, it is uh, held by a, a professional trainer, a chef, uh, specialized in uh, plant-based uh, cooking, and also one campaigner in Asiat Vegetal. Uh, in this uh, training, it's um, basically it's a one week training. So it's a short one. It's easy to, it's easy to follow. It, it's perfect for professionals because you have to keep it simple. And during this uh, professional training, participants are trained to five plant-based recipes uh, by uh, the professional trainer. And um, the idea is to show that it's, um, it's doable, of course, and uh, the ingredients are accessible. Because once again, access to products, uh, so depending on the supply of uh, the collective restaurants, uh, they won't have access to anything on earth. So our campaign manager during uh, this um, professional training also talks with the participants about uh, what are the products they have access to so that they can design uh, the best menus for, for their, their guests. And also, finally, they asked to put it in practice. They propose uh, to professionals to use this um, newly acquired knowledge to put it in practice in their own collective restaurants. And here you can launch, launch um, promotional events for plant-based um, dishes and cooking. And this is in our case, in Asiat Vegetal, the Green Week. The Green Week is uh, an event, um, it's one week long. And during with this week, the collective restaurant proposes um, a daily plant-based menu and uh, the idea behind the green week is to show the professionals so all types of professionals the ones we talked about that it is doable it is feasible and uh, there is a demand for plant-based options and uh, it, uh, and to show that it actually works so um, yes of course we have to have delicious plant-based options such as uh, this uh, very cool uh, burger and we display communication uh, and sensitization mediums in, um, in the collective restaurants. Those are directed towards uh, the guests, so the, uh, individuals who, uh, who, who eat there. And the idea is to, um, to, to have uh, the content of the plate, plate become meaningful for uh, the eaters and to push people to take uh, the plant-based option. Also, we measure impact, and here we mostly measure um, the number of people who, cho who choose the plant-based option during this week. And the idea, of course, is to show uh, the results uh, and, um, and the experience of the guests to the restaurant managers, the directors of the structure, and also the chefs to make it meaningful for them, to show that it is profitable and there is actually a demand for it. For it. And we use also media coverage. So we reach out to, to media so that they come and, um, and promote indirectly the, um, the event. So media coverage, as you know, is very important. And yeah, the idea is to make it happen. And when it's the case, um, and when, when the results are here, it's definitely uh, enjoyable. So that's what we do. Uh, that's why we do this. And uh, after the um, Green Week, we launched in uh, the Cruz. Uh, so the, this is the um, administration in charge of uh, university restaurants in France, in the region of Bourgogne Franche Comté. After trying uh, Green Week, uh, they decided to promote uh, plant-based uh, dishes in their restaurants and have 30% of um, plant-based dishes in their menus, which is uh, a good victory and we're really happy about it. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for your attention. I really hope um, this presentation was a bit useful for you. 
thank you also and um, yeah uh, more importantly for what you do thank you for working um, for animals and yeah i can't wait to to meet you all thank you bye hi welcome back i hope you enjoyed the presentation and right now we have a couple of minutes to take on some questions that you guys posted uh, during the lecture. So uh, the first question is uh, from Kirsty uh, Morgan. Do you see any differences between France and other countries in Europe? Uh, as for plant-based uh, options and yeah. the accessibility in collective restaurants, I guess. Yeah. Um, for collective catering specifically, specifically, I'm not sure um, that I have enough data to answer the question. But as for the accessibility of plant-based uh, plant-based alternatives and the plant-based diet, I would definitely say that um, unfortunately France is uh, late on that matter. So um, when you talk with professionals and uh, individuals, it's um, always it can be a, a bit complicated to reach out to them and uh, promote uh, the plant-based diet as uh, the French uh, cuisine is considered as very uh, meaty um, and very uh, yeah uses a, a lot of uh, meat-based products so um, yeah uh, there is a specificity in France and this is not a good one. Okay thank you. Another question is, have you ever had any failures using your methods? Could you perhaps share some thoughts on what you have learned? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, when you work, you always fail. That's the point. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not the point, but that's uh, an instrument for getting better at what you do. <laughs> and we failed a lot and we continue failing uh, in, uh, many, uh, in many ways. Uh, we failed um, regarding uh, like... Um, as for university restaurants, for example, we started um, we started our mission specifically on that matter, um, and it took a lot of time, uh, like one year and a half, before gaining enough legitimacy. I would say um, to to actually uh, reach out to to collective restaurants. Um, they first saw us uh, as um, as troublemakers. Um, and that's why in the presentation, I take some time explaining uh, how you can frame your speech and present yourself as a, a change manager or uh, someone who supports change rather than uh, who supports uh, animals, for example, because you, when you are uh, seen as a, an animalist, you you are seen as a, as I said, a troublemaker and people don't really want to work with you even more in administrations such as uh, university catering. So um, yeah, of course we fail, but sometimes we win. Yeah, we have two questions left and then we'll move to networking. Uh, someone is asking, uh, what exactly do you mean when you talk about collective restaurants? What does collective mean? Oh, okay. Um, I should have detailed that. A collective restaurants are places uh, of um, uh, mass consumption of, um, of meals. Uh, in this case, it is, for example, school canteens. It can be university restaurants, corporate restaurants. So places where people go, there is the same food offer for everyone. And you choose among those offers. And uh, most of the time it's for lunch. It can so also be on, in hospitals and so on. Okay, thank you. And our last question for the Q&A part. Uh, do you have any celebrity chefs on board promoting plant-based diets? Uh, right now we don't, but uh, we are um, actually uh, trying to, <laughs> to, uh, to have some on board um, as, for, as for independent uh, chefs, I would say. Um, we have uh, in France one vegan chef who uh, has uh, had a, a Michelin star, which is huge stuff in, uh, in France. So we are trying to get her on board. But we have um, supporters in, um, in collective catering. So chefs work in collective catering and uh, are able to talk in our, in our name and uh, explain that plant-based options are definitely uh, viable, they are doable, and uh, they work well. Uh, we have uh, the example of the um, restaurant manager at uh, the university restaurant of Paul Appel in Strasbourg. 
uh, or city. And uh, he's uh, the first to implement a daily plant-based option uh, in his menu. So uh, he's definitely a, a good supporter and we have others. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so this thank is you. for the Q&A part. Now, everyone who would like to join us for networking, please follow the link that was posted in the chat and we'll see you there. Uh, thank you, Morgan, for the lecture. It was really interesting and I hope to see you all in networking to discuss the matters further. So thank you once again and see you. See you.